And he was taken just two weeks shy of his third birthday. So I can see him in the lads that I've got now, you know, because they all look so similar. You know, the last thing he asked for when I asked him what he wanted for his birthday was a birthday cake. He didn't get that birthday cake. But you'd love the chance to give him a birthday cake. Gotcha. On his birthday, when he was first taken, I did place a birthday cake on his resting place, but, you know, it, it, it should have been in front of his face. On the 12th of February, 1993, Robert Thompson and John Venables kidnapped, tortured and killed two-year-old James Bulger in Liverpool. It was one of the most shocking crimes in modern British history. The toddler's murderers were both just 10 years old. A lot of people will know what has happened to James, but they don't really know. They don't really know the detail. They don't really know what was in Venables and Thompson's head and what motivated them and what made them the way they were. What, what do you think this tells us about society, about what's available online, about grooming? What, what's the lesson well, to be learned? There's a lot now that, you know, kids can learn through, you know, social media and stuff like that. But there was nothing like that back then. There was no mobile phones or not. And so, you know, just taking that out of the, you know, the question, it's just pure evilness on their behalf. How sick are they? Were they? I can't call them sick because there's sick people out there who need doctors and nurses. They don't, they just, they don't deserve anyone's time. You know, what they did, they took a baby's life and destroyed his family's lives in the, the proceeds of it. And they didn't just take his life, they tortured him. Yeah. That's, that's... In the most horrendous way that they could have taken a child. You see, that's the bit that I find really difficult. There could have been an accident, they could have pushed him over, there could have been something that went wrong and he hit his head, but they didn't, they, they dwelt on this for a long time. They planned to do that, what they done. Uh, they tried to abduct a, a kid two weeks before so, you know, they took that kid two, two weeks before James had stopped being here, no doubt. But, you know, they carefully planned that. It was premeditated. So they knew that they were going out that day to take a, a child's life. John Venables was released on licence in 2001, but recalled to prison nine years later after indecent images of children were found on his computer. He was again released in 2013, only to be put behind bars again for the same offence. This time, the parole board were taking no chances. Denise, when you got the phone call yesterday to say that Venables was not being released, how did that feel? I was kind of numb. I, I think I, st I still am in a state of shock because after 30 years, I finally feel like I'm getting listened to now and everything that I've said in the past, you know, it, it's wrong true because I did say, if the two of them were improperly punished for the crime that they committed, they only spent just over seven years in a, a young offenders. They never went to an adult prison. And I did say if they don't spend any time in a, a proper jail, either one or both of them will go on to re-offend and commit more crimes. And I was proven right with, with Venables. Where do we go from here, Denise? Venables is, is detained again but it could only be for maybe for two years. You might have to go through all of this again. You know, I've come 30 years fighting justice for James and, you know, I'll do it for as long as I need to, to do it or as long as I can do it. Um, until I get the proper justice, I feel like I've got some kind of justice for him now because he's been denied parole. And, you know, I am getting the backings of, you know, some MPs now, Dominic Robb and uh, Alex Chalk, you know, what they've been saying to me, they've stood by their words and, you know, they, they, they've helped me get some kinds of justice, which I've never had before. The government is pushing through an overhaul of the parole system, with new laws allowing ministers to block the release of the most dangerous criminals. It just feels like now I'm, I'm just getting support from, you know, the, the MPs, because this is the first time I've got to, actually got to, to meet, meet them and, you know, they've stuck to what they've told me. Yeah. What would you say, Denise, to people? This is not me saying this, but I know there will be people watching and listening to us and say, for goodness sake, Venables and Thompson were 10 years old at the time. They were, they were babies themselves. Well, how can you keep going on punishing them? One of them needs punishing because he's behind bars again. 
If Venables gets out, let's make him an example. If he gets out, these people who were saying, well, he would only turn, you know, you know, it's been 30 years now, let it go. Why should I? One, he was my son. He, he's not here to speak for himself, so I'm doing it for him. And two, if Venables does get out, these people who were saying, you know, let it go, if he went and killed one of their kids, they'd be saying to me, you should have fought harder. Yes. I mean, I know you, you've become, another, you know, you've got another grandchild now. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. I see pictures of you with your grandchildren. I can't do that. Where are you at, Denise? If I was to ask you now, here we are in 2023, we're heading into Christmas. What state are you in? I'm not in any state. I'm in a good place. I've got, you know, my husband's, my three boys. I've got my family, my, my granddaughter. You know, I'm, I'm in a happy place. The only time I'm not is when something like this occurs and I've got to take on another fight, but it's my choice and I'll carry on doing it. Do you live for James? I live for my lads, all, all of my lads. So you're not going to be simply defined by this one horrible aspect of your life? No, because I'm two people, I, th I think I'm two people. Um, I'm a mum, but I'm also a campaigner. And, you know, for as long as I've got breath in, in me, I will carry on campaigning to get justice, not just for me, but for anyone who needs it out there. And for people who will say a prayer for you this Christmas, what would you say to them? I'd say, say a prayer for James. Say a prayer for Venables and Thompson? No. Why not? They don't need prayers. To people who say they need understanding, they need forgiveness. They, they, they basically did get forgiveness, but one chose, he didn't want that forgiveness and carries on doing what he wants to do. He's not just a child murderer, he's also a paedophile. So they don't deserve any good. They've been given too many chances, especially Venables. You know, he's been given chance after chance, new rehabilitation, new names, this, that, and the other, loads of money spent on him. You know, he didn't deserve that, but he got it. And look where he's ended up, back in prison. Is there anything, anything at all Venables could do that would lift him in terms of your estimation? Yeah. Stay in prison.